Join us now on Flickr at flickr.com slash groups slash art of photography. Everybody, welcome back once again to the Art of Photography. My name is Ted Forbes, and today we're going to continue our discussion on large format cameras and large format photography. Uh, I've had, since I released the last episode, a couple emails and some questions on Flickr of people who said that they're really interested in getting into large format photography. What do they need? How expensive is it? And I'm happy to report that it's not expensive to get into. You need to be a little bit of patient when you're assembling your camera and things like that because you need to be able to look for good prices. The problem is, is that uh, a camera like this, when it was new, was very expensive. I bought this one used. And I paid a fraction of what it would cost me new. Um, and the problem is, is that people who go on eBay and places like that, even used camera stores, um, they really want to try to protect their investment as much as possible. I understand that. Uh, but the problem is, is finding people, because it's kind of a dying art a little bit, um, shooting film. Most people who shoot professionally are shooting digital now. Um, now, however, there are product studios. You can get digital backs for these cameras. And it's a big plate that fits on here as a cable, connects to a computer. And really what it is, is it's a scanner. And it actually scans. Uh, the surface rather than using a CCD like a regular digital camera would. The problem with those uh, companies like Better Light make them, uh, they're very, very, very expensive. I mean, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars in some cases. And so for us mere mortals, that's not really practical in terms of um, uh, what we're trying to do with photography. Um, I'm cool with that because I love to shoot black and white film. We haven't really gotten into it in this podcast yet, but there's a lot you can do with the development times and how you develop film to get different effects, different uh, uh, use case kinds of things things where you know uh, I need this to happen so you can control that uh, and that's why I prefer to use black and white film for that kind of thing uh, and that's the kind of work that I do but this right here is a it's a 4x5 negative and this is essentially where large format begins large format technically some people say it starts at 2x3 but it's a little bit of an obsolete format you just don't find as much cameras or film types cut in that now uh, 4x5 is still pretty standard you can go up to 8x10 and you can go larger um, it's very difficult to work with stuff or do anything with it if you've gone larger so I kind of like to stay at 4x5 this this is huge. This is uh, this still gives me way more clarity than I get even out of my Canon 5D as far as resolution goes. Uh, but for most purposes, I mean that's not what you're going for. I'm not printing billboard-sized images in general. Um, okay, now the negative. Uh, what you're going to need is a film holder, and that's what this is. Uh, this is a film holder. You can get these very cheaply. I think the best way to, to go on these is either find a camera show that's near you and go and just stock up on these. Find somebody who's blowing them out. Uh, used camera stores usually don't charge very much for film holders. Um, you can buy them new, but they're going to cost you more. I think I got these for like five bucks a pop. They hold two negatives, and I have a whole stack of them over there. I got them at a camera show. Uh, or look on Craigslist and see if somebody's just getting rid of their large format gear. That's another really good way to go. But this is how these work. Um, basically, you have a dark slide that comes out. We've talked about these a little bit before, and it comes all the way out if you need it to. And that's the dark slide. And then on the back, there's a little door, and this helps hold the film in. So what you're going to do is, is the film comes in boxes of either 25 sheets, or I think you can get them up to 100 sheets, or maybe even more. Uh, if you're just starting out, just get a box of 25 sheets and get two different types of film if you want. You know, experiment, see what happens. Um, what you're going to do is you need to load this into the, the film holder in complete darkness. Okay. So you either need to use a changing bag, or like I think the first time I did this, uh, I didn't have a changing bag, so I just went in the closet and turned out all the lights and made sure there was no light coming in. You do have to do this in the dark, but it's not difficult. This may be hard to see on the video here, but the, the negative actually has this little ridge of three bumps over here that are cut into the negative, and that's so you know in the dark which side you're putting in. So you take this out of the stack, and that needs to be as it's going into the holder on the top right hand side. You just use your finger to feel that out. When you know it's on the top right, you know you have the emulsion side facing you, and you simply load it into the film holder. You just close the back door, and then shut the dark slide, and that holds that down. And now it's going to keep that dark until you're ready to shoot on it. When you put it in the camera, you bring the dark slide up, take your picture, put the dark slide back down. You've got to remember to do that, otherwise you'll blow it. And uh, then you take this to be processed. Um, at this point, let's say you know these hold two sheets of film each. Uh, if you shot two pictures and you need to get them developed. Okay, that's the next step. You have a couple choices. You can go to the photo lab, which when I shoot um, color transparency film, that's what I would do. I don't do that at home. Uh, or if you shoot black and white, you can take that to the lab also, or you can do it in your bathroom. You do need uh, a, a real photo lab that can can uh, process 4 by 5 And when I do slide film, uh, I just take them the film holders. I give them a stack of film holders and say they're loaded with, and I tell them what film kind, and I need it processed, and then they do the magic, return it back to me, give me my film holders back. So it's very easy 
easy to deal with uh, anymore when I do black and white I process it myself so that's a whole step that you know we've talked about in other episodes so anyway that's what 4x5 film holders look like there would be 8x10 film holders here's the problem when you go up above 8x10 like if you're going to 16x20 or something ridiculous is what are you going to do to hold that film I mean and do you have a camera that will shoot it there are people that do this but it becomes very expensive and very niche and very hard to deal with at that point um, a couple more things I want to show you as far as cameras go I think that for me, um, one of the coolest and cheapest ways to get into large format photography is I have um, two of these. They're, little, they're made by the Lensless Camera Manufacturer Company, also known as Santa Barbara. But uh, you can find these on B&H, places like that. I'll put a link in the show notes. And these are just little 4 by 5 pinhole cameras. And they're very cool because you can, depending on the kind of wood you eat, you get one for like $25, $30, something like that, if I recall correctly. And they're pretty low-fi. You just take this backing piece out and you load your film holder in there and then you use these, these dowels to hold down the film. And then when you're ready to make your exposure, you lift the dark slide up, open the lens, and use your exposure, shut it, put the dark slide down, you're done. Uh, and these are pinhole cameras. So this is a really easy way to get into large format photography. I've got two of these. I've got a really short one that's a wide angle, and I also have a portrait length um, that I use a lot for indoor still lives, things like that. Uh, so using the pinhole cameras is a great way to get into it. You don't have all the movements and stuff that we're gonna talk about in the next episode, but you do have the ability to shoot 4x5 negatives large format and they come out beautiful. Um, I, if you like the look of pinhole I think it, it, its sweet spot really starts at about 4x5 and pinhole the idea is that everything is in focus at all times. It's an infinity focus and so you don't have anything to adjust on here. In fact there's not even a viewfinder. You just kind of aim it in the general direction. I use a leveler if it's a wide angle to make sure I'm level. Um, so, I mean, that's all there is to it. So, but the, the infinity focus of the pinhole, you know, is a theoretical thing, but it never is quite in focus. It has kind of a soft blur or soft focus to the image when you're done. Uh, but anyway, that's a great way to get into 4x5 uh, photography. One last thing I wanted to show you is if you're going to process your film at home, and I know some of you who watch this podcast are doing that, which is awesome, um, what you need to do is, again, total darkness or a changing bag, just like you would with roll film. And what you're going to do is inside the changing bag is just simply take these apart. We'll lock this down. Take them apart. Gently pull the film out. You don't want to damage it. You don't want to do anything like that. Um, be aware, too, you might want to hit these with a vacuum cleaner because there's a lot of dust in there or a dust cloth or something. Uh, make sure there's no dust in there. But anyway, you pull them out very carefully. And then you have one of two choices. Um, you can use um, these developing tanks. And again, used camera stores, camera shows, anything like that. You can get these little film hangers. And basically the film just goes inside. You slip it down to that hanger and there's a little door that comes over the top. It's kind of hard to see there. And that'll hold it in there. And then basically what I would use is a developing tank. Sorry, I've got a lid in there. You would fill this up with developer. You have to do this in the dark. And you simply dunk it in. And you can line a whole bunch of these up. Now what I do, if you, when you're ready to agitate the film, you don't want to spin it obviously, but you would gently just lift these out of the solution, put them back in. That would agitate perfectly. And and then once the time is up, you put them in another tank that's full of um, stop bath for using that and then fixer. And then you would wash them and hang them to dry. You can turn the light on once you get to the fixer. So anyway, so you can use these open tanks. That's a really good way to go. Uh, they're very inexpensive. And then uh, they're a little bit of a hassle. Uh, but this is called a combi plan, C-O-M-B-I-P-L-A-N, two words, combi plan. And uh, the combi plan is basically a big tank. And the trade-off is, is, this is what your film is, gets spooled onto, uh, the trade-off is, is these are a little bit of a hassle in a changing bag or even in the dark because there's more to it. And I'm used to it now, I like to use these, um, but you can kind of get your changing bag out, get your film finagled in here. This will hold six. Uh, photos and basically you need to get it into the tank put the top on and they put the lid on and now it is light tight and you can use these just like you would a developing tank for medium format or 35 millimeter um, this comes with a little funnel you attach here you pour your chemicals in takes a little bit of time to get them all the way up to the top and then you can agitate normally by by turning the combo plan tank and then when you're done you pull the stop at the bottom liquid drains out and then you fill it up with stop bath you fill it up with fixer it does take a little bit of time to fill so you kind of got to get your groove together as far as like when it's time to move on to the next chemical. I cut my development times a little short just because it takes a little while for the, the developer to get out of here. Uh, but what's really nice about this is it's a little built-in washer because you just take the top off when you're ready to rinse, stick that under the sink, unplug the bottom, you fill it up, and basically adjust the faucet so that, that water is entering the tank at the same rate it's leaving, and it gets a really smooth wash going across your negatives and uh, gets them real clean um, and, and really nice, I think. So that's the combo plan. Um, it 
It just depends. Uh, the Kami plan seems like it's a convenience and actually just uh, using a dunking tank is a little bit easier uh, in the long run. It just needs to be in complete darkness. So for instance, you want to process during the day and you don't have a light tight room, something like that. Kami plan will be your big bailout on there. And they're not real expensive. I mean, it's mostly rubber and plastic and uh, I'd have to guess, I want to say in the 50 to $60 range, but they may be more or less, but they're not, you know, widely outside of that. So anyway, but that's some basics about four by five uh, film and how to use a four by five camera. And again, I would look at, uh, if you're looking at cameras, either on someone like eBay or KEH or something like that, um, this is an eight by 10 camera. And there, believe it or not, there's a method to my madness. I don't shoot a lot of eight by 10, but the reason I bought a camera this large is I really want to get into alternative process with like, you know, Civil War era wet plate photography, things like that, where they were shooting these big plates that were eight by 10 and larger. And there are companies that will custom build you a back to hold glass plates and so when I bought this camera that was really what I had in mind as far as you know the master plan of what I was going to do I still want to do that but the problem is now is uh, when I got into it I realized that uh, there's a lot of chemicals some of them they're very hazardous and some of them are downright poisonous and and difficult to deal with and and you really need a dedicated space um, it's hard to do that in just a bathroom dark room so that is uh, you know gonna have to wait on the back burner for now but uh, that's why I have an 8x10 camera um, if you're wanting to just get into the film side of it, I would get a 4x5 camera. Um, I don't think there's any reason to go much bigger than that. You're going to get a huge, wonderful resolution just out of 4x5 negatives. Um, anyway, you need a camera and you're going to need a lens. I would buy them used um, and I think you could probably, camera, lens, and a tripod are the three things you need and probably a light meter. Leave the light meter out because those get expensive, but just the basic setup would probably run you, I bet you could get in there for under $500. Um, and get some really nice stuff. Uh, you add a really nice light meter in there, you're still under a thousand and you're getting images that just are the best quality you can possibly get. And you have the, the, um, the options of using movements, which we're going to get into in the very next podcast. So anyway, once again, this has been the art of photography and thank you for watching.